Welcome to the InfoGov Hot Seat Vodcast, featuring candid interviews with practitioners, consultants, and solution providers on hot topics in the information governance industry. Here's your host, Jim Merrifield. I'm your host, Jim Merrifield, and with me today is Con Vulcan at ZL Tech. Welcome, Con. Hello, hello. Good to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. Thanks for spending some time on the hot seat with us. We're going to ask you a few questions. About... So let's talk a little bit about um, the information technology industry. What made you actually enter this industry? Because you're, you're a young, a young uh, fellow. What made you enter this, this industry? Uh, luck of the draw. Um, uh, I finished college right at the COVID times, so it was really hard to get a job. And then I actually found one. There, yeah. The information governance. And at first it was just, it was really odd because it's something I never heard of before. And when I started getting into it, it just blew my mind. So I like read, read people. Websites like Google, YouTube, Facebook, oh, they're huge, they're massive. And then you, you realize, like, take that back, any back. They have more emails than Google has for pages. They have more data than Google. How's the, how many emails are people sending a day? What's going on here? Are they never deleting any of this stuff? Right, so... I like kind of stopped thinking about it. I just walked off to draw and I realized, oh, this is actually a fascinating industry. Yeah, there's like kilobytes and uh, of data being created every single day, and people still have a problem with hitting that delete button for whatever reason. Uh, before, yeah, I mean, you mentioned before the call that uh, you know you've done a lot of research around in place and data management. Can you tell us? What have you learned so far? I know you, you post a lot on LinkedIn. Yeah, so the rise in in-place management starts as right around the world. So, uh, a lot of companies went remote, and a lot of companies actually went. In the English club, they started seeing these insane store costs, and they started bit really worried about their cybersecurity. This is the data we used to keep locked in within our systems. We know where it is, we know what it is, we kind of like we know it's hard to get it to work. We're not quite sure what's going to have. Cloud also it's costing us three to four times more on the store. It at the same uh GDPR, CCPA, privacy regulations. So when those two things combine, the market came up with this idea of in place management. Instead of making a copy, putting it into an archive, you just manage it in place. That way you can delete things in place. Uh, plus storage costs. Also, you don't need to choose a copy. You need to create a copy. Good luck, right? Like, Privacy says you have to find me old PII. Yeah, it doesn't you tell you. Go ahead and find a little bit of it. It's like, yeah, find it all. So each time you're making a copy, you're just making it worse for yourself. So the market came up with this idea of a place management. And it initially it was for uh, fosters. Now, in the last four years, there is, there is new technologies coming out for email management. Too. So that's, that's kind of the intro. If you look into what these technologies are, what do are they? There are roughly three categories. 95% of the solutions are going to be those three categories. So there is the metadata only management category. This is what we're used to. Right? We've, we've seen these technologies quite frequently in our hands. It just opens up your files, your emails. You give it a retention code, a lexicon, some way to tag your data. It goes in, it reads your documents, tags them, closes it. It does not keep any of the contents. It forgets all of the content. It just keeps the tags. Great for short-term management. They start getting harder for long-term management, especially with the vouchers. 
to this kinds of technologies. Uh, but, but emails that are a bit more stable, send out the email, it's, uh, it's there. But if you put the file on the file share, someone can go in and edit it. So the content is never realistic. Uh, so these kinds of tools, after six months, a year, we start running into these top mission stuff. I want to update my retention codes. I want to start tagging this kind of documents. Then the tool goes up. Sorry. We don't keep the content. Like, if you want to do this, we'll have to open all of your files again. Uh, <clears throat> so that's that's one type of solution. The other type is what I uh, I call piggybackers. I named it myself. Okay. They basically piggyback on Microsoft stick. And Microsoft itself piggybacks on their own technology too, which is fun enough. Uh, these kinds of tools, they have the full content. They use, they use the end users' tools. So let's say you want to do data management for your emails or for your file shares. When you say, hey, find me all of these records, find me all these emails with this, this kind of keyword, they actually use the same search that you use in this end much, much better than metadata-only products. It just came, it, it started becoming a huge thing in the market. And I see the metadata-only products disappearing. The one big issue is it's the end user's mailbox, right? So I still have access to that data. Also, if you think about emails, if you think about email tools, your outlook, it's got different priorities. It's its biggest priority is sending emails, receiving emails, deleting emails, moving emails. Its second priority is when you run a search as the end user to find those documents. Its last priority is information. So it usually comes back to you and tells you, look, we understand this is, this is critical for you if you cannot produce these documents. By Wednesday, you're going to lose your court case, but we're sorry. We'll have to wait until the mid when no one is on their email addresses. The third category is full content, dedicated content management. Uh, so this is when you're not piggybacking on end users' mailboxes, but you have a very white weight search index, what we call search index of the content itself. So you don't keep the content, you just have the ability to search it. In that way, you don't have to rely on the end user deployment. You can search it within that dedicated deployment. And if you need to pull that data out, it's rather easy. So that's, that's kind of a brief outlook, right? The field really started around 2020. Hold it. That's the big push together with the privacy. Right now, there are new tools coming out for email management as far as in place management goes. And there are really three categories of tools. So, metadata form solutions, or that for short to medium term, gets rough. If you want to manage data for five, seven years, take your content, think about Microsoft. Uh, that is what they do. They're the needy cutting edge technology. And then there are some dedicated content solutions. Those are a bit more rare. That was a long monologue. Hey, thanks for breaking uh, breaking that down. You mentioned new technologies. So let's talk about a new technology. Well, I mean, it's not really new, but it's hot right now. Are there yeah. any AI technologies that you take advantage of to streamline your content marketing strategy? I know you post a lot on LinkedIn. I do. There are three AI tools that I use. It almost feels wrong to call them AI tools. Uh, I use Adobe's transcription service. It's, it's not as fancy as chat, GPT, or large language models. It's really simple. It just transcribes things for me. Uh, within the same tool, there is background editing. So let's say I find a really fancy picture. Background. So it will be expressed until I take care of the background. The third tool I use is 
It's mostly for emails, but their recommendations work across all of your. It basically says, hey, keep your content less than 60 words if possible, your emails less than 60 words if possible, and keep it simple, right? Fifth grade writing level, or hard sentences, or long sentences, something fancy, you know. You, Try to not even use ad words, they get tips, just simple, right? Uh, that's the only, those three are the only AI tools I use. Google and his AI, if, if you check my LinkedIn, <laughs> I don't trust it too, too much yet. No, you gotta work hand in hand with it, right? And, and, and I mean, everybody uses some kind of AI tools, but uh, I agree with you that the human factor can really not be replace so thanks for giving us a highlight of that so i know we've talked about a lot huh today i know there's more that we could we can go on and on and on i'm sure this is not going to be the last time i have you hot seat any final thoughts from the audience uh if you like what i talked about today go give me a follow on linkedin i post every day i spend quite a lot of time creating each one of my posts and i use no way that almost very to trade after this all authentic, 100% made by me, and it's all relevant to records. Love it. Yeah, we appreciate those posts. They're very educational, and I love it that they're authentic. And, um, you know, I, I follow Colin on, on LinkedIn. I enjoy his posts. He posts even on the weekend. So if you're looking to get some information government's education, even on the weekend, follow Khan on LinkedIn. And again, thanks so much for for spending some time with us today, Khan. It was very enjoyable to get to know you a little better or what you do on a daily basis. Uh, also nice to, to speak to somebody who's relatively young in the industry and get your perspective. And I think that was very insightful. If you have to be a guest on the hot seat like Khan here, just uh, all you got to do is submit your information through our website, infogovhotseat.com. And uh, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Man, thank you for having me kind sir thank you for listening to another episode of the info gov hot seat follow us on spotify youtube google podcasts apple podcasts and linkedin check out our main website at infogovhotseat.com to view our latest episodes and much more